you don't need to do out. Before I close the video, hear me out. Maybe, just maybe, you or your neighbor or you colleague need them, but chances are you're doing it wrong. Well, I mean, probably you know how to use NCTOs. Probably you test them. But do you know that you actually usually can avoid using them? What is the history of using NCTO? Actually, they originate from somewhere like 2005 when the whole idea of returning entities was very scary. Because when you return an entity, you have to serialize it, right? Wrong! JSON view, JSON ignore, and other useful notations can help you avoid it. And today, we'll talk about them. Hi, you're on Cyberchar. I am Basha. I am developer advocate at Bellsoft, and I'm more than 15 years in software development in JVM. And every time I hear about DTOs, it makes me think, is everything going right here? Let's discuss. If you follow our channel, then you just saw a video by my colleague, Kat, about how to use DTOs with Spring Boot and in Spring Boot applications. She describes a lot of useful applications of DTOs validations and custom beans and so on. But think about the amount of machinery, additional machinery we should use just to use this approach. We have to create a lot of DTO classes, potentially a lot, because for one entity, we can have almost infinite amount of projections. And all these projections will have the same names of fields as our entity, most probably. There are exceptions, surely. Also, we have to rely on code generation. I personally love code generation, but do I really want to map everything with generated code? Which is simple, but it's still a ton of code, and it's not like I really control it, right? When I control my code generation, I'm totally fine with it. But when someone else does it, it comes out of hands very quickly. Is it fine by you? Do you like it? I think that I know a better approach. Let's start from a simple example. I have a very basic entity here on the screen. It's just a user with username and password. And it's so simple to imagine the situation when there are a little bit more fields and we want to return them all but password. And many of you probably reflectively created DTO for it. Like a user without password DTO, and then you will map it, a user entity to user without password DTO with mapstruct or tool like that, or just manually, and return it just to be on the safe side. But it is quite a boilerplate, to be honest. We know that we certainly never want to return passwords, right? Maybe we can just put JSON ignore annotation on this field. It reduces the amount of code we have to write dramatically. It's one line of code. Actually, it's metacode, it's just an annotation. And I would argue this code is actually more maintainable than the version of DTOs. If we have only one entity for everything, and it doesn't leak unnecessary information to our users, so we are safe, and our code is shorter and easier to read. I hear your voices and they're too loud. Pasha, this example is oversimplified. Okay, okay, you're right. Let's get back for a second. Let's imagine that there is one more field in our entity, it's email and we do not want to return email to regular users of our API and front-end, but we want to return email to administrators or, say, internal personnel of our company. Surely you know how to do it with DTOs. You will just create two more DTOs. One of them is user DTO without email and without password, and user DTO without password with email. Two more. Okay, that's fine. No, it's not. You could just use 
JSON view annotation. Let's see how it works. Look at this class, views. It only contains two classes inside free, public and internal extends public. All the fields elevated with JSON view public should be available to our general audience. All the fields annotated with JSON view internal as well as all the fields annotated JSON view public should be available to our administrators of internal personal. Now let's update our paint stereo a bit. We'll add JSON view public to our IT at username. They could be available to anyone. We'll update email to be JSON view internal. And we will leave password as is JSON ignore. Now let's update our controller. With JSON ignore, it's simple. When Jackson sees a JSON ignore field, it will just ignore it. But views, we have to actually update our controllers. Here is how we do it. We just add JSON view annotation on methods of our controllers like fix. What are these voices again? Pasha, I don't use JPA. Oh, you use Joke. Actually, I'm on board with you. I don't like JPA either. Joke gives me much more control over my SQL and I love it. But there is an issue, right? Joke generates code. We can't just put annotations on generated code. Do we actually need them? Is it avoidable? Do we need to use Joke generated DTOs? Actually, we don't. To address this issue, Jackson uses an approach very popular in, say, Scuttle world, but almost unknown in Java, and it's Mixins. Let's look at the Mixin example. Mixin is just an interface, and it only contains getters of our fields, and these getters can be annotated by Jackson notations like JSON view or JSON ignore. For example, here we see two getters annotated with JSON view public and one getter annotated with JSON ignore. When we create such mixin, the only thing we left to do is to register this mixin in Jackson. Here is how we do it. Obviously, if you are not obligated to apply mixins only to records, if you want, you can apply them to JPA entities or any other classes you don't control. It's totally in your power. The beautiful thing here, your class shouldn't implement the interface of Mixin. The Mixin is just an interface known only to Jackson, registered only for Jackson, which controls the serialization behavior. And what is the sound again? I'm hearing, I'm hearing, I'm hearing your question. Asha, our objects are not as simple as you show. We have complex data structures and they are in JPA entities. They depend on each other. And when I have a comment, this comment has a user. Our users do not exist in vacuum. They are bound to something real. Amazing news for you. If your person has a list of comments or if your comment has a link to a user, you can annotate things in all of them with your views and the whole structure will be visible only to a degree that is allowed by JSON view annotation, like here an example. Now, I know there is a couple more questions. First, validation. Beautiful. You can put validation annotations on your entities too. And if you need to validate it, you will. And also, Hibernate Validator supports validation types of validation classes, so you are not obligated to validate all the fields. You can validate some of them depending on your context, on your situation. The second, many of you think, or many of you will say, that DTOs are more explicit than annotations. Well, kinda, but not. Annotations are also explicit, and what's more important, they are reusable. They do not care about how many projections you have. You will always have what you need without excessive amount of classes. And when one day you will have to move field from one view to another, you will just do it and it won't break any API. Sure, you will have to fix your tests, but this is what we have tests for, right? So 
What do we take out from this video? I hope that now you at least have another view on the question, do I need a TTO? If you need it, please use it. Just know that there is an alternative. If you want to know more about DTOs, please check out Kat's video. If you like the video, like the video. If you don't like the video, please leave a comment, tell us what you think and maybe I'll fix it, who knows? And with this, Pash is out, see you next time.